Hi, Rick here from Marvin Models, DJI dealer from the UK and RC specialist for over 40 years. In this video, I'm going to cover DJI's new Osmo 3-axis handheld stabilized camera gimbal system. So where does the Osmo fit into DJI's range? Well, it's going to be an incredibly useful tool if you already have the DJI Inspire, It'll allow you to take some aerial shots and have very similar sort of shot from the ground in a handheld stabilized system. Uh, this particular version is the ready to go version, which comes with a, a, an Osmo version of the X3 camera. So this is the same as the Inspire's X3 camera, but it has a, a shorter focal length for more close up shots. And it'll also go down to 120 20 frames per second so you can do some very nice uh, slow motion shots. Uh, it's also available as a handle only version uh, if you already have an Inspire and you want to fit the Inspire's X3 camera onto it. So in the box you're going to get the Osmo handle, of course if you get the ready to go version you're going to get the X3 camera, it's going to come with a charger, battery, get a set of instructions and lanyard and a very nice case as well so if you're into micro ukulele playing it'll fit that. So goes into there, fits in, and that will protect it nicely when you're traveling. So first quick job is just need to charge up the battery. Very simple, just clips into the charger. You'll get a red light on there first, and then when the battery's fully charged, you will get a green light. And then you just simply pop it into the bottom. There's a small catch on the bottom, so it's just a case of unlocking and then just slipping the battery in. Just make sure you get it in the right way. A bit in there and close. So first things first, you need to mount your smart device onto the uh, the device holder. It's quite a simple clamp system. Just fits into the two little jaws, which are fully adjustable. So it'll take a huge uh, size of different uh, uh, smartphones. Tablets generally are a little bit too big, and then you just pull it sideways, and then that just locks in nice and simple. That's all angle. You can angle that as well or twist it, etc., depending on how you're standing on it. And it's actually a really substantial clamp, very well made, very well machined. This is also removable because the device will actually work without having any smart device actually attached to it at all. So the first thing we need to do to get the uh, your device connected to your uh, to the Osmo is because it's Wi-Fi driven, the first thing you need to do is turn the Osmo on. You've got the small slider switch on the side there, and that will boot up the Osmo. And then what we're looking for, once it boots up, it creates like a Wi-Fi network. So if you go into your Wi-Fi places, you will see, there's the Osmo. So we just tap on that. And that's you now connected to the Osmo network. There we go. And then we can basically just go into the app. Now it just uses the DJI Go app and it will detect what you're actually going to be using. So there we go, that's us up and running now. Okay, so first of all, we'll go over the hand controls. Now, you know about the power button, that's the one on the side, so it'll start it and stop the power. Uh, and then next to that, you have the actual uh, thumb control. So you have a panning and tilt, as you can see there. Okay, you've got your start video, stop video, and then here you have your shutter. You've got two power lights. You've got a status light here, which is actually indicating that my battery is low. And then on the other side, you've got the one for, for example, starting your video, it'll flash to tell you that you're taking the video. So check out the instructions. It will tell you what all these different light color combinations do. On the front of the model, on the front of the handle, you have a trigger here as well. What that's used for is different shooting modes of the gimbal. So for example, um, as you see, the camera is not pointing straight ahead. If I double click it, it will return the camera back to looking straight ahead. Now, if you do three clicks, one, two, three, it goes into selfie mode. So it'll be pointing at yourself. And then again, one, two, to go back. And then, as, as you imagine, it is a stabilized gimbal. So as I move it around, as you can see that the camera is following the handheld part, if you push it and hold it, you'll get the logo here, the lock logo. So as you move it, as you see it now, the camera is locked on a point on the horizon. So it's like a head locking mode. Other good thing about it as well, you can hold the whole handle set up in uh, three modes. You've got an upright mode, you've got torch mode. And again, all you do is you just double click and the camera will point straight ahead. And then finally, you've got under slung mode. Again, just double click 
and then you'll have the camera pointing straight ahead and it'll, it will basically flip over the image inside of the camera so it's facing the right way. Okay, now I'm going to use my tablet to show you the basic features of the app itself. I'll go over in more detail in another video. So kind of moving around, you've got, if you're used to the Inspire, these are all very, these are very similar. So you've got, obviously, you can start and stop your video there. Uh, you've got your settings for your video camera. So you've got your manual settings, iOS, uh, ISO, shutter, and um, exposure across the bottom. Uh, so we'll just get rid of that. Uh, you've got your um, your shoot modes. You get either automatic or slow motion. That's coming back to the 120 frames a second. And then moving down the way, you've got that's your your menu. So your like folder. So this is basically all the sort of shots and stuff you've been taking. So you can preview them because they will cache onto the uh, tablet itself. Clicking back. And then going over to sliding up to camera, you've got your camera modes in there. So you've got single, pulse, panoramic. Uh, the panoramic's a good one. If you stick the Osmo onto a tripod and fire up the pano, it will do a full 360 rotation on its own. So you could maybe, if you were doing, say, real estate and doing like a inside of a room, it'll do a full pano of the room without you in it. So that's a really good uh, feature. You've got interval and, of course, you've got time lapse. You've also got your other settings like HDR, etc. there, um, timer, etc. Along the top here, you've got just basically your information. What like modes are, just tilt that so you can see it. What modes you're shooting at, etc. frames per second, battery life, and of course your Wi-Fi status. And then moving around here, you've got settings. Again, I'm gonna come back to this in a later one. So you've got camera settings in here. So this is all things like, you know, what format you're gonna be shooting in, PAL, NTSC, uh, aspect ratios, you know, your what video mode, JPEG, RAW, etc. You've got all those there, loads to muck about with. Have a good look through that, it's very, very good. So we go back to, oops, back to settings. Then you've got gimbal. This is for doing things like adjustments, calibrations, etc. You've got you've got various settings here as well, so you can do pre-programmed parameters. And this is basically like your reaction speed, how it reacts to your movements. You've got fast and got fast medium and slow and then you've got two custom ones another nifty thing is if you want if you really know what you're doing you can actually come down in here into sorry just tilt that so you don't get the light on it you can come down here into the advanced settings again i'm going to go over this in detail so this is sets things if you're used to things like the ronin m etc this will set things like the reaction speeds to your movement the dead pan the acceleration how fast it reacts to you etc and then of course you've got all your calibration stuff there at the bottom uh, and then finally at the bottom there we have general so we've got wi-fi settings where you want to clear your video cache whether you have the video cache on etc and all sorts of other stuff like formatting card etc and then moving up of course you've got things like your white balances that's all fairly straightforward and get up to there You've got the gimbal modes. That is basically what you got, what you can attain by the uh, trigger. So a lot of features are actually doubled up onto this. And then, of course, back to your home folder. So you've got obviously your things like library, your user, typically. Because with uh, the DJI Go app, the idea is that the one app does all their devices. So, for example, I just flick across here. You've got Matrix, Phantom Stand. So if you're fortunate enough to have all the craft as well, it just uses one app. And the app will actually detect what craft you have. And then you can select it from there. Well, I hope you found that video helpful and informative. If you're looking to buy the new Osmo handheld gimbal from DJI, I hope you consider buying it from myself. Keep the channel going and supporting your local dealer. Um, subscribe to my YouTube videos or you can follow me on Facebook for more uh, new products that come out to the multi-rotor and handheld gimbal market. I'm Rick from Marvel Models, DJI dealer from the UK. Thank you very much.